Welcome to another edition of Maverick University. I'm your host, David Hallberg. Joining me today is Dr. Mike Hall, Vice President of Providence Baptist College. Yep. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Glad to be here. One of the classes you teach at the college is one of those you've taught since the college's founding, uh, evangelistic song leading. Yep. And it's something that you've been involved in for as long as I've known you. Uh, even before I knew you, uh, yep. I knew that you were the song leader of Northwest Bible Baptist Church. And uh, can you give us a little bit of your background uh, involving music? And that's what we're going to talk about today is song leading and how yep. to do it. Well, I always enjoyed music. I played in bands and sang in choirs and so forth. I was in school, but and so I ended up deciding to be a music major. Uh, but when I got to campus, uh, I got involved with a group that right away I started leading singing with because I was at least minimally trained at that point in time. Mm -hmm. So probably since I was 18 or 19 years old, I've led some form of choir or song leading or something or other. Um, and just it's just been a part of wherever we've been, they've had the opportunity mm -hmm. to do some of that. So, <clears throat> so in the ministry, you men get asked to lead the singing in church regardless of their ability to do so. Sometimes they're learning on the job. Uh, they may have an ability to sing, but just because they can sing doesn't mean necessarily know they know what they're doing and how to best go about it. Obviously, there's some philosophy behind why we do congregational singing uh, and the role of a song leader uh, to help accomplish those goals of, of congregational singing. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about some of that? Yeah, I've always felt that song leaders should lead singing in our independent Baptist churches like the preacher preaches. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, the thing that leads up to uh, the preacher preaching is going to be congregational singing. Mm -hmm. And so if we want our preachers to be you know, bold and strong in what they do, then we'd like our song leaders to be that way also. Okay. Um, I don't want to mistake in, though, enthusiasm and technique, one being more important than the other. As a matter of fact, if, if I were to give importance to one or the other, I'd say it's it's more important for a song leader to be an enthusiastic kind of a guy, okay. even if he doesn't do things right. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been around song leaders before that uh, I would evaluate them if I were grading them as doing everything incorrectly, but boy, they could get a, 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 a congregation to sing out or a choir to sing, sure. and we're very effective in doing that. So when I, when I teach song leading, my, I guess, the initial thing that I mentioned is you got to be enthusiastic. You got to have some kind of a personality and and if you don't put one on you know it's like working yeah. a, a bus route i guess and then i mean not all of us walk around through life pounding on roofs and yelling and screaming or whatnot yeah. bus people have to put that on so as a song leader if you're not naturally kind of a happy peppy individual when you get up there and lead singing you need to try to be a little bit yeah. Because what you do in the pulpit is how your congregation is going to f respond to the song leading. And if you're boring and slow, uh, the congregation is going to be that way. But if you're happy, peppy, lively, and excited about what you're doing, even if you're not perfect technique-wise, mm -hmm. uh, you can pull it off. So I, I try to make sure that the, the young people that take the song leading class and, and other places where I've done seminars or whatever, that, that I make sure they understand the, the real key is what you're trying to get out of the congregation, mm -hmm. and that's exciting, uh, revivalistic type of singing uh, when, called for, when, when that's called for. Uh, but then there's something to be said for doing things right, doing things right. Sure. And so what I try to do in the song leading class is with that priority of uh, bold and singing out and being excited about what you do and announcing the verses and whatever. Try to get them in a position where they're doing the things like they should be doing. Uh, then when they get out in their congregations, they can do whatever they want to do, but at least I've shown them the, the procedurally correct way of doing things, mm -hmm. uh, and then they can take it for themselves. Absolutely. Now, one of the things I appreciate about it, being able to do this podcast is... Uh, we travel a lot recruiting for the college, and so we're in a lot of churches where our graduates are. And by the way, this is not just a guy thing. This is important for ladies also because mm -hmm. gals lead singing in women's meetings, uh, the junior choirs. Uh, there'll be a lot of different opportunities at, around here anyway uh, for gals to, to lead singing. So mm -hmm. we challenge our, our gals to take song leading class also uh, if, if they enjoy music. Um, <clears throat> but one of the things that I do, like I said, even in seminars and whatnot, is I try to focus on those things which will enhance their, their um, song leading enthusiasm mm -hmm. by doing this stuff right. And, and like I was starting to say, as, as we travel around, uh, we'll be in churches where our graduates are leading singing, and I can tell that 
the, you know, some of them took song leading when they were freshmen in college and didn't do it again until they're out in their churches. Yeah. And so they've forgotten some things. Got it. So I'm thinking, you know, this may be a real good opportunity for this to be a refresher for some of our graduates. Yeah. As well as an introduction for some that maybe a never occupational had training. Here exactly for them. right. And, and okay. it's kind of funny because I'll take and be out in the congregation of one of our guys song leading in another church, and they'll be up there starting to direct the song leading, and I'll reach in my pocket. <laughs> and I'll pull out my planner, and I'll pull out my pencil, <laughs> like I'm going to grade them. And I had I had one of our graduates get so flustered by it that for the rest of the service he wouldn't even look at me, and just it completely focused his attention someplace else. So <clears throat> they know if I show up that that I'm going to try to do something to uh, distract them. Pressures a little bit. on. That's huh? right. Exactly right. That's so funny. So when you teach song leading, obviously enthusiasm, but there also are those technical things. What are some of the thing, early concepts that someone needs to understand when they're first asked to lead singing for church? Obviously, they're wondering, what do I do with my hands? Where right. do you start teaching? Well, kind of from the very beginning, um, we, we want to have a good presence in the pulpit. Sure. And so we, we actually practice it in class where I get them up and they stand up in front of class. And typically... I just hopefully we can get this here, but typically um, they'll they'll have their feet about shoulder width apart, maybe one foot a little bit farther ahead of the other. Take and raise that dominant hand to where the arms kind of parallel to the ground. Push it away from your body a little bit so you got some space. And then take your hand and just tilt it a little bit, but but you're just comfortable. You don't rigid like this or a claw or thing. It's just comfortable. I tell some of them it's like palming a basketball or palming a volleyball. And so the hand's just comfortable out to the side here. And I might mention this as far as your feet are concerned. <laughs> people have a tendency, some people have a tendency to be swayers. So they'll sway like this, or some of them will sway like this when they sing or whatever mm -hmm. they're doing. Uh, we had a, a gals singing group years ago where one of the gals, when she sang, sang like this, and the gal that sang with her sang like this, and so it was synchronized singing. We had this going on, and people in the congregation were going, wow, that's really cool, look at that. You know, and so they had that kind of thing. But if you want to fix that, it's really pretty easy. So if you, if you tend to be a forward and back swayer, put your feet parallel, because your body won't let you do the forward and back thing. Mm -hmm. If you're a side to side, move one foot, right foot if, if you want, farther ahead of the other, because then you won't go side by side and you'll, you'll, you'll be tippy that way also. Mm -hmm. So generally that'll take care of any of that. For, for the most part, if it's just a little bit, it's not a big deal. But some people are major swayers, and so we gotta make sure that we've got that taken care of for them. So as far as, as that is concerned, that's the posture. You've got your arm up like this, and, and then you're able to have plenty of room. Move your arm up, push your, your arm forward a little bit, tilt your hand just a little bit, and you're gonna be doing this kind of thing. And this hand is just down at the side. Later on, you can develop two hands where if it's a, a bigger portion of the song or you have a bigger congregation, then you might want to use two hands. Uh, it doesn't hurt to learn how to do this left-handed. Uh, years ago, <clears throat> I had rotator cuff surgery, and for six weeks I had my right arm in a sling. And so I went to my pastor, my kind and caring, compassionate pastor at the time, Brother Gomez, and said, preacher, my arm's in a sling, and I, it's, and I was a song leader, and I said, what, uh, maybe we ought to have somebody else do this. He said, shut up, just go do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> so I had to learn how to lead singing with my left hand. Fortunately, I had done some for a while, but it doesn't hurt to learn both ways or two hands, mm -hmm. but get one hand down for starters, uh, and that'll be kind of the best way that you can get started. So uh, basic beat patterns. Let me move over here a little bit. <clears throat> and really, when we're talking song leading, there's, and even choral directing, uh, instrumental band directing, uh, there, there may be more beat patterns uh, than just three. But for choral and song leading, for the most part, there are only three beat patterns you have to worry about. There's a two beat pattern, a three beat pattern, a four beat pattern. So on all beat patterns, the dominant beat of the measure, the heavy beat that you'll hear go by, is down. You conduct down. And there's a little bounce after that, that's the rebound. But First beat is always down. Last beat has a big rebound to it. Mm -hmm. So if you only have two beats, it's down and up are where the bounces are. Down, up, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, 
too. And, and the, the beat itself is in an area about this big, just to your right a little bit, maybe heart level or so. But that's where the real bounce, the beat is. The rebounds define what the beats are. And so it's one, two, one, two. And I'll even add a little hook to one just for a little depth or width on the, on the, the beat pattern. So it's one, two, one, two, down, up, or small, large, small, large, one, two, um, dare to be a Daniel. Standing by a purpose true, heeding God's command. One, two, one, two, so that's in two, four. There's just two beats, so it's just down and up, down and up. Now, if you have a three beat pattern song, <clears throat> uh, Cleanse Me, O Lord, then you got down with a little bounce, then beat two is gonna be out, and the last beat is again up. So you got one, two, three. And you can see how the beat stays right here. It's the rebound that defines what those beats are. Choral music is not quite as necessary as it is for instrumental music. In instrumental music, you don't have the words to figure out where you are if you have to get off. But the beat pattern will tell you exactly where that song is at at any given time. In choral directing, uh, they have the words to help with that, but it still is important to, to have your beat pattern correctly. So if you have a three beat pattern, it's down, out, up, down, out, up. And you can see the beat is still right here. It's the bounce that defines the rebound or ictus, if you want to call it that, it, that defines what beat it is. So if your beat, if first beat is here, if your second to last beat is always out, your last beat then is up. So if you have a three beat pattern, down, out, up, down, out, up, down, out, up. Cleanse me, O oh God. Na, da, 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 da. So you got your three beat pattern. Well, the only one that's left is the four beat pattern. And the four beat pattern, <clears throat> if you have down and you have out and you have up, what's left? In. So your four beat pattern is little bounce, Bounce in, bounce out, bounce up, down, in, out, up, down, in, out, up. And you still see the beat is right here. It's the bounce that goes different directions. Small bounce, bounce in, bounce out, bounce up. One, two, three, four. Oh, what a savior that he died for me. Bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. So your four beat pattern fits with that. So the primary beats that you're going to have <clears throat> um, it, with, with any, any kind of time signature that you have is going to be two, three, or four. So now what we have to do is figure out, because songs at the beginning of them have a little fraction, and that fraction tells you, gives you the indication of what your beat pattern should be. And so in some of those songs, it's two, four, three, four, 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 like I gave an example. But in some of them, there's a denomination of eight. And so if you have a number above and a number below, it might be like six, eight. Um, various songs will have six, eight. We, there are some in your hymnal that are nine, eight. There are some that are 12, eight. And those different songs are affected differently, but you're still gonna use one of those three beat patterns as far as that's concerned. So six, eight, for example. <clears throat> Sweet Hour Prayer, if you look at the time signature on Sweet Hour Prayer, it's 6-8. They call it the time signature. It's the beginning of the song. We might have a graphic here on that, but Sweet Hour Prayer, you see there's a 6 and then an 8. Sweet Hour Prayer is done slow, typically slow. So the top number tells you what your beat pattern is going to be. Uh, washed, are you washed in the blood? That's in 4-4 four, four time. That top number tells you that the beat pattern is going to be 4. Cleanse Me, O God, is in 3, 4. That tells you the top number, tells you that the beat pattern is going to be 3. Dare to be a Daniel is in 2, 4. Top number tells you your beat pattern is just 2. In 6, 8, though, <laughs> we do, there, there is a beat pattern of 6. You, there's a beat pattern of 5, 6, 7, 8, not, whatever. You can do those beat patterns, but rarely do we use them. Otherwise, the congregation just kind of looks at you like you're funny. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2. Rather than just boiling it down to those simple three beat patterns. So if you're in 6, 8, like Sweet Hour Prayer, and it's slow, instead of doing a 6 beat pattern, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
just do two groups of three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, like, <clears throat> sweet hour of one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, and so on. That works for songs that are six, eight, but there are some in our hymnal that are in nine, eight, or 12, eight. If they are slow, you still just conduct it in three. If it's a nine, eight song, you just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if it's slow, you just want to keep it in that, in that pattern or in that, that three beat pattern that we have. Um, so Sweet Our Prayer, for example, is slow. On the other hand, there are songs that we do that are 6-8 fast. Uh, praise Him, Praise Him. We'll grab that real quick here. Praise Him, Praise Him is in 6-8 also, <clears throat> but it's a lot faster. So you got Praise Him, Praise Him, Jesus our blessed redeemed. So if we did that and tried to count and conduct all the beats, it would be Praise Him, Praise Him, tell of His... You can't do it that fast. So instead, for 6, 8, 9, 8, or 12, 8 that are fast, we simply conduct the heavy pulses. So praise Him. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Praise Him. Praise Him. Tell of His excellent greatness. Whatever the, the words are with that. <clears throat> and so you determine ahead of time if it's going to be slow or fast. If it's slow, doesn't matter, 6, 8, 9, or 12, 8, you're going to use a three-beat pattern. But if it's fast, then you have to take the numerator, the top number, divide it by triplets, because 6, 8, 9, 8, 12, 8 is a triplet-based feel. So you divide that numerator by triplets, and that tells you what your beat pattern is. Mm -hmm. So in 6, 8 time, if we divide that by triplets, mm -hmm. what are we left with? Two. So your beat pattern, praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent, great, and so on. If it's in 9, 8, you divide the numerator by triplets, what do you get? Three, three all right? Um, there, there, there are probably two or three songs in our hymnals that, that are fairly familiar that we do. Uh, heavenly Sunlight, I think. Heavenly Sunlight, Heavenly, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five. Heavenly Sunlight, I think, is in nine, eight. Mm -hmm. um, saved, saved. I found, uh, that's the, the, the verses are in 12, eight. And the chorus is in 6-8. Mm -hmm. Is this fast or slow? Well, it's fast. So you take the numerator, divide by triplets. If it's in 12-8, what do you get? 4. Mm -hmm. So you start it off conducting in 4. I found a friend who is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. When you get to the chorus, it drops to 6-8. So mm -hmm. now what's your beat pattern? To save by his power divine. And so those are the basic beat patterns that we end up using. And that almost every hymnal, every hymn that you have in the hymnal, those three beat patterns will service those, those particular hymns. You just have to know and have an idea of what beat pattern that you're going to use. In, a, in a, another podcast, we'll talk about pickups and preparation uh, note beats and all that kind of stuff. But those are the basics. You start with understanding the two, three, and four beat pattern, and then you just start bouncing away until a heavy beat comes by. If you can't pick it up right away, and just pick it up when you get the opportunity to do that. So those are the basics, Brother Hall. Uh, and obviously this is something to be practiced. Uh, yes. It's not like this is academic knowledge, like, oh, well, now I know. Uh, you've got to actually put it into practice and employ it. Otherwise... Oh, yeah. Well, I tell the students, yeah. I say, you really need to try it because it's muscle memory. Mm -hmm. doing it right. I said, you really need to practice, run through this thing every day until you're familiar with it because it, you're right. You can understand in your head what you want to do, but mm -hmm. you get up there and try to do it and your hands betray you mm -hmm. if you haven't practiced and prepared. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And I'm sure a lot of people will get a lot of help and instruction in this. Make sure you check out the other episodes on YouTube as well. Make sure you like this video, you, uh, that you also share it with uh, somebody that can help make the podcast channel grow. And make sure you check out the audio-only podcast platforms as well. Thank you so much for joining us.